Picture this. You've won a membership to a space gym. You get to travel around the solar system and work out. But gravity changes on different space bodies. So let's find out if you can get stronger elsewhere or if you should keep practicing on Earth. Your spaceship is approaching dwarf planet Pluto. It's getting chillier by the second. No wonder! The sun is over 3.7 billion miles away. You must be glad you brought your thermal spacesuit along, right? To leave the spacecraft, Earthlings would need the help of a gravity machine, since gravity on Pluto is a mere 1 15th of that on Earth. Gravity is the force that pulls you toward the ground. The smaller the mass of a space body is, the weaker its gravity. So, on Pluto, you can't do any sports that involve running. If you did, you'd most likely fly away. You can try out elephant lifting, though. After all, you can't do it back on Earth. On Pluto, picking up an elephant weighing 2,000 pounds feels like lifting 120 pounds. The next stop is Neptune. It's over 30 times farther away from the Sun than Earth. The atmosphere there is dark and cold. You might get overwhelmed by the planet's gigantic size. It's called an ice giant for a reason. Maybe today you'll feel like doing some winter sports? To say Neptune exists in perpetual winter is an understatement. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 373 degrees Fahrenheit. But gravity here is only 10% stronger than that on Earth, so you don't feel much difference. This world doesn't have a solid surface, so you won't be able to leave the spacecraft. Is that an ice hockey rink I see? Grab your ice skates and your stick and get ready to outplay your fellow passengers. How about a quick pit stop on Uranus? This is another ice giant, and gravity here is 90% of that on Earth. You can do a few push-ups inside the spacecraft, as you won't be stepping outside. The slushy surface of the planet is made up of water, methane, and ammonia in its liquid form. There's no solid ground to walk on. But if you somehow found a way to go outside, you'd feel lighter than on Earth. If you weighed 100 pounds back home, it would be 90 pounds here. Can we call this a Uranian diet? When approaching Saturn, please mind its rings, which aren't actually rings. They consist of pieces of asteroids and meteors flying around the planet. Saturn's mass is so big that it attracts many other space bodies to its orbit. And right now, you're one of them! Time to get creative with your workout. You've scheduled a skydiving experience here. If you freefall in Saturn's atmosphere, you'll reach the speed of 30 miles per second. Don't forget to open your parachute. Eh, on second thought, though, you won't be able to touch the ground anyway. Saturn's surface is pure gas. Quick fun fact, once Saturn got in the way of the 10th planet forming in the solar system, the planet's debris, which partially makes up Saturn's rings now, could have blended into a planet. But it was pulled into Saturn's orbit instead. You're nearing Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Gravity here is so weak, you feel weightless. Let's say there's a rock climbing wall there. How about you give it a try? Usually, this sport requires a lot of physical strength. But here, you'll only have to carry 13% of your weight. Your climb to the top will be easy-peasy in these conditions. Entering Jupiter's atmosphere will feel like being inside a cloud. See that red spot in the bottom left corner? That's a storm twice the size of Earth that's been raging for hundreds of years. To have some fun here, why don't you do some jumping jacks? I'll count to 100. Ready, set, go! Gravity here is super strong. It's two and a half times as powerful as gravity on Earth. So you'll probably get exhausted at the count of 30. <laughs> Too bad. Uh-oh! Passengers aboard the spacecraft, fasten your seatbelts. You might experience some heavy turbulence. To travel from Jupiter to Mars, you'll have to move through an asteroid belt. Just in case you're worried your ship will bump into something, relax, there's a distance of 300,000 miles between asteroids. Let's stop at Ceres, the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Gravity here will make you feel pretty strong. How about practicing some caber tossing? Cabers are heavy logs that can measure up to 20 feet long. The goal is to throw them as far as possible. Here, a 180-pound pole feels as if it weighs 5 pounds, which is, basically, the weight of a melon. Ready for the series caper competition? Woohoo! Finally, Mars. 
Remember all those handstands you've always wanted to try? Well, here's the place to do them. Mars's gravity is about two and a half times weaker than that on Earth, which means you'll probably be able to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. Since people keep trying to terraform Mars, opening a gym here doesn't sound like a bad idea, does it? Passengers and crew members, we're now beginning our descent to Phobos. It's one of Mars's moons. Gravity here is incredibly weak. If you've always dreamed of having superhuman strength, this is the place for you. You can work out here by, say, doing some artistic gymnastics. Start off with a cartwheel, then move on to tricks performed in the air. On Phobos, you can start doing triple back handsprings in no time. Ah, look! Earth is about to appear on the horizon. It sure looks majestic from here. But we won't stop there now. Instead, let's visit Earth's sister, Venus. It has almost the same mass as Earth, which means these planets have similar gravities. Now, Earthlings can't survive on Venus's surface because of the large amount of ammonia in its atmosphere. But let's imagine you could practice some outdoor sports there. Do you feel like trying bumper bubble soccer? That's when you dress yourself in a giant bubble ball vest and keep bumping into other players. People play this game on Earth. On Venus, with its slightly weaker gravity, it might be a little bit easier. But still, you have to consider you'll be wearing a 25-pound ball as a vest, kind of like a hamster back on Earth. Not to mention your outfit will restrict your arms and legs. It's a challenge, but it sounds fun to me. Moving on, if you land on the sunny side of Mercury, you'll experience scalding hot temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're feeling tired after your space workout, a relaxing, steamy sauna will be just the thing you'll feel like a brand new person by the time you arrive on the next planet. We'll fly as close to the sun as we can so that you can have a taste of its gravity. The sun's mass is huge. It's over 333,000 times the mass of Earth. And gravity here is extremely powerful. You'd have trouble lifting something as light as a bottle of water if you managed to step on the surface of the sun. Too hot, you say? Well, I imagine it's a whole lot cooler if you come back at night. <laughs> Just kidding! On our way back home, we'll stop by the Moon. I mean, our Earth's natural satellite. Walking on the surface of the Moon will feel like jumping. You'll be able to jump as far as 33 feet. So why not try some parkour? If you play basketball, scoring a point will be very difficult. But then you can jump higher than the hoop and do an epic slam dunk. And how about baseball? If you throw the ball upward, you'll probably never see it again. Finally, we land on Earth. Sorry to disappoint you, but you're not coming back with any superhuman strength. Even when you were lifting an elephant, gravity was helping you out a lot. It was a good trip, though. Don't you think so? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.